briefly, I, I will do as invited uh, by the chairs and take the opportunity to give you a brief set of some of the findings that NIA has been able to support over the past years, which correspond to our collaboration with OBSSR and the rest of the institutes across NIH. And let me start with a couple of examples which I think are enormously illustrative of the way in which behavior and social research has had excitement at the level of basic science, uh, but science that has been over the past year is also translatable. And I picked this uh, first example from the work of Colleen Ball and, and collaborators who uh, were looking at cognitive mechanisms involved in aging in particular, but, but um, amenable to the study of cognition across lifespan. And in particular, focused on what you see here as the task um, Told, called a useful field of view, which basically is a matter of perceiving on a screen complex events and making time restricted or time scored decisions about their complexity, which turn out, not surprisingly, perhaps to have great relevance to driving skills. And the translation came in the observation that performance on this test was firstly predictive of outcomes in driving, and so that's been incorporated now, in fact, to the screening at a number of motor vehicle bureaus across the country. And uh, equally, or perhaps more important, that training on this task could actually translate into improved performance, not only in the test, but in behaviors such as driving. And this, if it would advance. Next slide, whoops, one at a time. Uh, shows really dramatic uh, outcomes of tracking the result of training to these cognitive components on outcomes in terms of uh, at-fault uh, uh, vehicle crashes, serious accidents over a subsequent five years. So these are individuals who were trained briefly in the period of the initial year in memory, in reasoning, or in speed of processing, and then tracked five years later for outcomes in terms of uh, at-fault crashes. And you can see quite remarkably that training in particular in reasoning and speed of processing on the scale reduced accidents by some 50%. And hence, not only has this been of interest to the motor vehicle bureaus, but now been incorporated by a number of insurance companies giving discounts for such training. Uh, another example. Nope. Well, this will speed it along. It's not bad. Um, why don't I just introduce the next speaker, <laughs> uh, which is fine. Um, uh, the, uh, actually, there's, there's ones I'd like to go to. Of, of these, um, this might be more important for the actual uh, speakers today if, if they have the controls working. But let me uh, move to our, the, the final slide and all this. As we're giving acknowledgement to the people who have made such a difference in behavior and social research over the past 20 years, I, I share this picture which some of you will recognize. This is Richard Sussman, who uh, until earlier this year when he, we, we lost him to ALS, had been director of NIA's Division of Behavioral and Social Research. And Richard was very well known for being in touch wherever he was and whenever he was. So any hour depended largely on time difference. Uh, as epitomized here, and Richard, this is, you may recognize, Richard holding his Blackberry, several time zones away, uh, riding in elegance. And it's this leadership he provided us. And again, with collaboration with OBSSR, the kind of leadership in behavior and social sciences that have uh, marked NIH over the past year. So without uh, further ado, and again, hopes for better uh, luck, Henry, in the presentation to follow, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Henry uh, Yin from uh, Duke who's been looking at uh, neural aspects of learned behaviors, in particular focusing here on the role of basal ganglia in learned behaviors. <laughs> 